Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to talk about hydro desulfurization. As promised, we are taking up a very important topic in the refinery industry because many of our subscribers have uh, asked me personally to make more videos like uh, catalytic cracking unit as we have already made, uh, other units uh, that are famous in the refinery and what better than hydro desulfurization. It's a very easy procedure, a short procedure, but a very important step in the preparation of certain uh, petroleum products in the industry. and. Uh, uh, I pardon for my irregularities. I generally do put up videos on Sundays, but I have not been able to do so because um, COVID-19 has struck for the second time and it's very pathetic a situation right now and we have to serve about 12 hours of duty daily. So I am busy with my work here so much that I do not get time to make videos, but yet I want to help you guys. That's why today I'm up uh, and uh, out with the video on hydro desulfurization unit. So when we talk about hydro desulfurization, why is hydro desulfurization? Desulfurization required at all. We need to understand this. Hydro desulfurization primarily means, as the term suggests, desulfurization. So the removal of sulfur by some means. The removal of sulfur by some means. Why do we need to remove sulfur at all? We need to understand this. Uh, the more is the sulfur in the fuel in itself, the more will, will be the emission of SO2. So a sulfur rich compound will have a higher SO2 emission than a sulfur poor compound or a sulfur less or sulfur free product. So we need to stop the emissions that are already affecting our environment so much. And that's why recently we see the launch of DS6 engines and that's why specially fuel uh, designed uh, for DS6 engines are coming in the market. Uh, earlier the BS4 engine allowed about 50 ppm, 50 ppm of sulfur in the fuel. But now in the BS6 engine, in the BS6 that we are launching right now, only 10 ppm sulfur is allowed uh, in the fuel in itself. So you see, there is an urgent need of removal of sulfur to reduce the emissions firstly. Secondly, the presence of sulfur in any of the products particularly affects the reactor beds, the um, pipelines, because sulfur in itself is a very corrosive product. And anywhere you send the sulfur, it will tend to damage the uh, structure, it will tend to attack the material of construction of the distillation columns, of the pipelines, of the reactors that you are going to use, or any equipment in the industry. So to ensure the uh, lifelong uh, or the longevity, if we say, of the equipments, we need to remove sulfur primarily. So sulfur removal is a huge step as uh, far as we are concerned about preparation of fuels in the industry in particular, particularly petrol, diesel, ATF. Why is it so important in aviation turbine fuel? Aviation turbine fuel primarily tests for the presence of sulfur, tests for the presence of water and tests for the presence of any type of uh, sediments or uh, solids, uh, TDS or TSS in the fuel that is being prepared. So you see in the ATF also there is a high chance of corrosion of the engine blades if sulfur is present by any means. So we need to reduce the sulfur in the compounds and the primary step that is being used in the refinery process of the industry is hydro desulfurization. One, uh, as the name suggests, desulfurization and why does this hydro, where does this hydro terms comes from? Why does this hydro term uh, come from? Basically, whenever we treat a sulfur rich compound, we treat a sulfur rich compound with hydrogen, basically H2S is being formed in the presence of a catalyst in a reactor. So you see, a hydrogen primarily, pure hydrogen primarily tries to entrap the sulfur that is being present in uh, a sulfur rich fuel or a sulfur rich compound. So whenever we need to free out the sulfur from a particular compound, we will react it with pure hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen primarily uh, takes out the sulfur from the compound and that is exactly what we are doing. We are sending the feed through a pump into a heat exchanger wherein we are primarily heating the reactant. Along with it, we are seeing that we are mixing H2. So basically, it is going in a heat exchanger. Uh, the gas mixture uh, or the gas liquid stream is going into a particular mixer wherein uh, it is being mixed. It is being uh, preheated uh, through multiple steps first by a heat exchanger, HE, and then by a fire heater, FE. Let us call it fire heater, FE. Fired heater FH. So, firstly, heat exchanger and then fired heater. So, it is gaining some amount of heat, and as it enters the reactor bed, it is already heated up the reactant stream. And uh, as we exit the reactor, primarily most of the sulfur is being 
consumed up by hydrogen and H2S is being formed and some products, other side products are being formed that is sulfur free. So now we need to remove this H2S from this particular product from the reactor. We have converted all the sulfur into hydrogen sulfide, uh, but how to remove this uh, hydrogen sulfide from uh, the product stream? First of all, we use the heat of the product to heat up the reactant in a heat exchanger as we are seeing the product stream is being directed uh, in the heat exchanger and it is leaving as a cold stream it is losing heat it is leaving as a cold stream and further it is cooled down using a cooler further here and then it is fed as a liquid vapor mixture into this particularly what you call it a uh, uh, separator a gas separator separator so in this primary gas separator what happens is liquid due to its density settles down to the bottom and since we are releasing the pressure once again it is a flash evaporating system as we have learned in the case of polymer manufacturing uh, when we decrease the temperature or throttle the valve uh, throttle the stream the pressure is reduced and as soon as the pressure is reduced the boiling point of the mixture decreases and the gases that are present in the mixture temporarily tend to vaporize or form gases and escape the liquid part that remains doesn't contain any dissolved gases so whenever there's a pressure in the system the gases tend to remain dissolved in the liquid stream due to the pressure that is built on it whenever we release the pressure from the system the gases the dissolved gases try to escape out from the liquid and escape as h2s gas primarily as we can see from the gas separator now this h2s gas primarily uh, cannot be sent back into the system because it is also rich in sulfur so we need to entrap it somehow so that whatever gas is escaping supposedly this feedstock contains c1 to c10 Supposedly, let us consider. So C1, C2, C3, C4, these will also be primarily present as gas stream. So H2S gas plus C1, C2, C3, C4 will be present. So we need to separate out the C1, C2, C3, C4 from the H2S gas. We have already separated out the liquid stream, that is C5, C6, C7, diesel, uh, ATF cuts, kero cuts, we have separated. But what about the uh, C1, C2, C3, C4? They are also primarily have a tendency to form gas and H2S is primarily present as gas. So this will form a gaseous mixture of H2S gas plus C1, C2, C3, C4. Now we need to separate out the C1, C2, C3, C4. And what we do is we follow the technology popular in the industry that is amine stripping. Now what is amine stripping? Amine stripping or amine absorption of uh, H2S gas is a very famous procedure. Amine is a very very basic gas and H2S as it contains hydrogen it is an acidic gas. So amine solution basic is basically trapping the H2S gas that is acidic gas within itself to form a salt. This amine forms a complex salt. Now, there are different kinds of amines. We are going to discuss it in detail. In fact, one of my projects in IIT Guwahati was regarding the trapping of CO2 gas using different kind of blended amines. Now, amines may be primarily uh, MEA, that is methyl ethanol amine. Uh, it may be MDA, methyl diethanol amine. It may be uh, PZDA, different kind of piperazine, PZ. Uh, different blended amines are also being used in the industry depending on their characteristics to absorb the required gas. Here our required gas that is that needs to be absorbed is H2S. So amine is basically being used to consume up this H2S gas uh, from the system and let alone C1, C2, C3, C4 that escapes out and this C1, C2, C3, C4 is being recycled back into the system. And primarily this rich amine is trapping the sulfur and letting go of the H2. So as soon as the H2 leaves the chamber, this H2 can be recycled and reused. So this is my recycle stream. Recycle stream, this is my compressor. Compressor that is compressing back the sulfur-free gas along with C1, C2, C3, C4 and recycled hydrogen back into the system. And the sulfur is being primarily trapped by the amine due to some chemical absorption process wherein amine has an affinity to trap the sulfur within itself and removes the sulfur from H2S. Now you might question that why amine is not introduced here in itself, why we need to treat with hydrogen. Because hydrogen has a primary tendency to drive away the sulfur as a gas, whereas amine has a tendency to remain in the liquid and try to tend to uh, form a mixture with 
within the liquid itself if we treat this particular feed in the reactor with amine amine may react with the feed itself and may form a different type of a compound in a liquid mixture which might be difficult to separate whereas when we treat this gas particularly with lean amine lean amine means less sulfur amine less sulfur amine lean amine means lean means less or thin so sulfur is less and as it escapes sulfur is high and no sulfur is present in this gas stream that is escaping from the amine absorption tower so this is basically my amine absorption tower so you see that amine is primarily absorbing the sulfur and c1 c2 c3 c4 the gaseous state carbon and the, the uh, recycled hydrogen is being refilled and some amount of uh, purge gas is definitely being sent out purge gas purge gas is sent out to the other units now you see from the gas separating the liquid that remains might contain some amount of dissolved h2s it is not 100 percent separated in the gas separator itself only by flashing out uh, throttling so you see there is some amount of h2s plus primarily c5 to c29 anything and everything that is in the liquid state so h2s is present as dissolved gas in this particular liquid stream for that we Further sent it into a distillation unit. Typical distillation column, as we all know, in a refinery is primarily consisting of a steam stripping column. We also call it a stripper, wherein we send in steam, we send in steam or heated vapor to strip out H2S from the top as vapors. So this is rich in H2S. Whereas the bottom liquids, the bottom liquids is sulfur free product as we purge it out of the system. So the feed that we initially sent in here, the liquid portion that remains is sent into a distillation column where it is steam stripped or the uh, automatic uh, H2S being uh, highly volatile in nature and being primary in the gaseous state tries to rise up and the liquid that is collected at the bottom is a sulfur free product from C5 to C29 that has a tendency of being a liquid. So this is a continuous process wherein uh, there is a continuous uh, reflux also going into the chamber, reflux going into the chamber, this is my reflux as we have learned in the distillation column and uh, this reflux is basically purifying the, uh, the sulfur free product that we get at the bottom and is further entraining H2S. So, more and more amount of H2S is being absorbed or stripped out rather I would say uh, from the tops whereas we get a sulfur free product at the bottom. This H2S that we get further forms vapor at the top of the reflux uh, drum and this vapor is being escaped out and is brought back into the amine chamber or purged out directly wherein again H2S is being absorbed and the C1, C2, C3, C4 if any that escapes out along with the H2S gas is sent again back into the recycle stream along with the feed. So we see that first we react the sulfur with hydrogen which forms hydrogen sulfide and it gets separated by a flash evaporator and whatever remains is further separated in a distillation column and all the H2S is being attacked by the lean amine that is less sulfur amine and the sulfur is being absorbed by the amine due to some chemisorption reaction, chemical absorption and rich amine that is sulfur rich amine is going out of the chamber and sulfur free gases is escaping out from the top which is recycled back into the chamber along with makeup hydrogen. Along with that, the sulfur free product is obtained from the bottoms of the distillation column that we are using in steps to separate out whatever amount of H2S is being present in the streams. That is the process, that is the entire process of hydro separation. That is a very popular practice in the refineries in itself. We hope that you liked the video. Uh, if you like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and we will try to bring more videos like this. Thank you very much.